Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another show of Be Strong Minded. Today, I have with me incredible guest, Samantha Skelly. I've been following her journey over two years now, so you can just imagine my excitement to have her here today mm -hmm. with me. For those who didn't know about Samantha yet, you are about to learn that she's an entrepreneur, motivational speaker, best-selling author, and emotional eating expert who has revolutionized the weight loss industry by examining the individual and underlying causes of eating disorders. Mm. She has shared her mission on international platforms and continues to spread her message and transform the lives of thousands of people through the Phoenix Formula, motivational speaking engagements, the Hungry for Happiness podcast, worldwide international retreats, and her Amazon best-selling book, Hungry for Happiness, one woman's guide from fighting food to finding a freedom. Mm. Samantha, I'm so blessed to have you here today. Thank you so much for making the time. Absolutely. I'm so grateful to be here with you. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you know, before we hop on the recording, I told you that I really, really, really wish that I would have met you eight years ago when I was struggling myself with bulimia for back then it was 18 years of eating disorder. Wow. And uh, I didn't, I feel ashamed. I feel guilty, you know, I shared a little bit with like a friends, but someone who didn't go through eating disorder, mm. they will try to, you know, tell you it's going to be okay or how can I support you? Right. And they don't know. So mm. I am so grateful, not just for myself, because, you know, I'm mm. very blessed that six years now I'm eating disorder free. And yeah. I'm, thank you. And I'm in a place that I truly, truly love myself and my body. And I know that there were days that I felt like there is something possessing me. I'm like, this is not me. There's like mm -hmm. a darkness over me that it's managing my thoughts, my actions and everything. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering, Samantha, if, if there is someone who comes to you and they want to learn about you what is the most important thing you would share with them? What is the one thing that when a new me people meet you, what do you want them to know about you that is true to your core? Oh, God, that's such a good question. Uh, we all, eating disorder or not, struggle to really realize the power we have in our bodies how powerful we are as humans. We are so incredibly powerful. We are so magnificent. We have the ability to completely transform our life, completely be who we want to be in this world and do what we want to do and achieve what we want to achieve. And it doesn't matter if we're struggling with pain. In fact, having pain in our bodies is a part of this human experience. We can't expect to feel the light and the joy without the pain. We can't expect to have that. Duality is everything. And amongst the pain, we get to find our power. Amongst the pain, we get to find this part of us that is so incredibly capable and so incredibly um, powerful to be able to truly create. We're, we're either in survival or we're in creation. And a lot of, when I was struggling with, with my eating disorder, and, and maybe you could relate to this as well, there are those two modes. If we're not creating what we want, if we're not creating our ideal life, creating our best self, creating our day, creating our energies, creating our frequencies, we then are in survival where we think life is happening to us. And so mm -hmm. one of my most favorite sayings and things that I say constantly is, Everything is happening for me in perfect timing. Everything is happening for me in perfect timing, timing, meaning no matter what is going on in my life, that is supposed to happen, supposed to be there because it's delivering me a very divine lesson. And so oftentimes we can look at these challenges or look at these, this pain and go like, oh, why is this happening to me? Not this again. Why me? And we can play the victim card or we can go, this is happening for me for a very di divine reason. Let me now create a narrative 
of why this is happening. And when we sit from, from a positive outlook, and when we create that, we step into a more powerful place. And every human on the friggin' planet has the ability to do this. We just don't quite know it yet. Mm, that's incredible. You know, and I remember first time when I heard that from Tony Robbins, when he says, so mm. many people think that the life is happening to them and they live in a victim mode instead of stepping into the power mm. and say, this is happening for me. And I truly love that you are saying, look for the reasons why, you know, because yeah. I heard that, um, from, um, one of my loved ones and he said, find a gift in it. It's not looking, you know, sometimes the people there are looking for a lesson. And when yeah. we say look for a lesson, yeah. for me, that feels negative. I don't know about you, but I don't yeah. want to be lectured. Like mm -hmm. when you're feeling um, depressed or you're in a dark place, you don't want to feel even more lecturing. You want to feel yeah, the exactly. nurturing. Exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You want to feel nurtured. You want to feel you want to feel, because here's the thing, it's like when we're in those times and when we're in those states, the thing that we need more than anything else is love, right? It's not, it's not more hatred. It's not more self-hatred. It's not more self-pain. It's love. That's all we need in those times. And so when we're in a state of darkness and we're in a state of overwhelm and we berate ourselves and we, we go deeper into self-sabotage and deeper into, um, why am I doing this? And, and this sucks. And I hate this. And we keep playing out that that same narrative it's like we're just digging ourselves into a, a, a deeper hole so what if we could say in those times what if we could say this is so happening for me and i get to love myself even amongst this pain i get to love myself even though this is so painful and feels so awful i get to fully love myself in these parts and the, the where true transformation and healing happens is the intersection of pain and love that's it. It's the intersection of pain and love. So when we're feeling pain and we choose to love ourselves rather than berate ourselves or, or sabotage ourselves, that is really where love happens. The healing happens. That's incredible, you know, because I feel, and, and it's so like, you're talking, I'm like, yes, 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 absolutely. I resonate with it so much. Yeah. We are trying to avoid the pain. And sometimes when we're trying to avoid the pain, we are creating even more. Absolutely. We yeah. are coming from place of fear instead of place of love. Yeah. Start numbing and it gets absolutely, absolutely. Worse. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's like, as soon as we start to numb our experience and numb our emotionality with whether it's, whether it's anything, right? Food or social media or drugs or anything at all, we're not giving ourselves the opportunity to actually explore what the, what the, what the finding is there, what the golden nugget nugget is there. I love, I love your, I love how you said it's not a lesson. I don't want to be taught a lesson when I'm in this pain. And that's such a great reframe because when we say like, constantly like, what's the lesson? What's the lesson that, that feels a little bit like, Oh God, like, I feel like I'm back at school. Like, okay, fine. I'll fine. But like, rather than like, let's extract the golden nugget. Like if I, if, if I was to extract a golden nugget nugget amongst all of this, what would that be? I love that. That's beautiful. That's such a beautiful reframe. Yeah, absolutely. Because I know that, and you don't have to be suffering with eating disorder. We all in our lives have these mm. ebbs and flows. And when you're low, I love that you said it. Like what we mm. really, really crave is the love. Yeah. Samantha, what would you recommend to people or, you know, uh, women who are in the dark place and they're not yet in the place of loving themselves mm. yet? You yeah. Know, because you mentioned, I get to fully love myself even. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So that's such a great point. So um, I have this, <laughs> I have, I talk, I, I talk, I did a video on this a few years ago, about a year ago. So, and it was called the negative side of body positivity. And it talks about for someone who's hated their body for their entire life, it's truly impossible for us to get to a place of self love immediately. And that's like, that's a lot of pressure, right? Like I, I take myself back to the days where, you know, I hated my body. And if someone stood up and said, you need to love yourself, I'd be like, what, what does that even mean? Like, that's so difficult to even like wrap my head around. Right. But what we need to, the place that we need to get to is acceptance and neutrality. We don't have to love it, but can we just simply accept the fact that we hate it first and foremost, if we can just accept the fact that we hate it, then we can start to start to really explore and ask ourselves if I was to love my body, what would that even look like? 
right? Oh like, and, and, and let your system and let your body give you the answers rather than being like, okay, loving myself means journaling and meditating and taking myself for walks and eating the right food. It's like, does that, does that mean that for you? Like it could mean that for that Instagram person you follow, but not necessarily for you. Maybe like for me, loving myself, something that I do to really love myself is let myself just cry and break down. Mm -hmm. That's me loving myself because I'm honoring the emotionality that's real and present in that moment. Right. Or, or maybe loving myself is an act of loving myself is having a bath and like having a glass of wine and just like chilling out for a couple hours or, or maybe loving myself is just taking two hours out of my day and just meditating or, or whatever, whatever it is, or like maybe loving myself is, is, is speaking my truth to my, to my partner or to my friends or my, you know, uh, people who, who, who work with me in the company. Like maybe that's loving myself, like really understanding, like asking yourself if I was to do an act of love for myself right now, what would that look like? And let ourselves just be open to what that what might be and what that, what that narrative, how that narrative may unfold. That's incredible. So I love that you're using the empowering questions, you know, mm -hmm. to really ask yourself what it would look like. Because if you've never been there, you don't know how does it look like. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Like I, there, there, there's even just sort of being on this path of growth and, and growing my business and growing my relationships and deepening my, my, my partnership and things like that. Like there's levels that, that we're going to get to together, whether that's my business partner or my boyfriend or whatever it is that I've just never been there before. So like, how can I just like ask myself, like, what would it look like if we had more depth in our, in our business partnership? What would it look like if I had more intimacy in my, in my relationship? Like what would all of this stuff look like? And starting from that place is such a healthy place to start from. That's incredible, you know, and I love that you are sharing so openly, you know, mm -hmm. and it's, it's very refreshing, you know, to be talking with people who are in their own power, who are so mm -hmm. real. And yeah, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be all rainbows and butterflies, you know, this is how you can get there. And this is how mm -hmm. you can start and starting mm -hmm. from a place of acceptance. Yeah, it's beautiful, because, you know, so many people that I talk to are talking about awareness which mm. is incredible you gotta be aware however mm. i feel like for oh. people who are coming from a place of eating disorder or negative self-talk yeah. or negative self-body image mm. first have to come from a place of acceptance yeah 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 i mean because you can accept it and still be at odds with it or sorry sorry you can ha you can um be aware of it and still hate it right? Just because there's the awareness of it, right? Like, oh, I know I do that pattern and I'm aware of that, but I hate it and I'm not going to change it and I'm not going to love it or I'm not going to transcend it, right? Like, yeah, awareness, of course, self-awareness is like the first step in everything. But once we have the self-awareness, then can we have the self-acceptance? Then can we accept it? And then can we transcend it and mold it and transform it into what we actually want and what's actually true for us? So there's parts of my personality. I know even right now, number one, I don't have awareness over them, right? That's why I have amazing people in my life to be like, hey, have you thought about this? Like, are you, do you realize that you do this? And even though it's triggering when you hear that, you're like, oh, fuck. Yeah, I do do that. All right, let me change. But there's, there's parts of me that I know that are not in alignment with the highest version of me. I know that, obviously. So it's so important to constantly be on this quest of curiosity and rely on people like your boyfriend, like your partners, like your family to reflect these things back to you and go like, hey, you're doing this pattern or you're doing this thing or like, are you aware of this? And it doesn't mean that it's wrong. It doesn't mean that you have to change it. It's just like awareness. And once we have that, then if it's something that we don't like, then we can accept it, love it, and then move on from it. But if we have awareness around it, and then we immediately go, oh, I'm such an asshole, or I can't believe I did that, or I'm so bad for doing this, we can't heal something that we hate. We can't do that. So we have to have that piece of just like fully accepting. Mm. I love what you just say. We can't heal what we hate. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's so incredible. I, I never thought about it this way. And it's true because, you know, when I started on, on a journey of personal, you know, development and spirituality and body positive, everybody was talking about, okay, you got to love yourself. You got to love yourself. How do you want me to love myself? Right. 28 years. Yeah. I, I didn't know who I am. I hated the body I was in instead of mm. appreciating it. Mm -hmm. so you can't heal yeah. from a place of hate. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. 
So um, you mentioned these beautiful questions, you know, what would it look like? So if somebody is still struggling with accepting who they are, accepting mm-hmm. um, where they are in life, would you say start with journaling about what would it look like if I am in a job that fulfills me? What would mm-hmm. it look like mm-hmm. being and loving yeah. in a healthy, strong body? Would yeah. it be the ideal start? Um, I'm always, so I'm of the mindset of like action-based transformation over like doing, I think, I think like if, if we say like do these things and meditate and write these things down, we immediately go into our logical brain. And what we know to be true is our logical brain is not going to heal our emotional bodies. And so rather than starting there, start from a place of feeling. Like if I was just to feel into what that might be like, what does that actually feel like? You know, and starting from that place rather than like journaling it out. Because I know sometimes when I'm journaling, I'm just like writing, writing, writing. And I'm like, this is not hitting. Like I'm not actually feeling anything right now. I'm just literally writing. So it's, it's really important just to get connected with the visceral, get connected with our bodies, get connected with our emotional, our emotional bodies first. And then see, and then add in the tangible external, whether that's, um, writing or, or doing any other of like self-care practices that people like. You know, what's going to be my next question, right? (laughs) How do you connect with your emotional body? How do you really Mm. connect with the emotions? Because Mm. I don't know about you, but back years ago, I was scared. I was scared to feel, I was scared of the pain it will bring up. So how do you connect with your emotions if you were numbing them for so long? I'm glad you asked this. Well, there's a new company called Pause Breathwork. (laughs) Uh, Honestly though, like uh, we're creating our second company right now, which is affiliated with Hungry for Happiness called Pause Breathwork. And it's essentially helping people who have no access to feeling. Because here's the thing, so many people, especially women who struggle with eating disorders, are trying to think their way to feeling right? Mm -hmm. Like, let me think about it. Like, let me think about how to do it. And it's not a how question. It's not a thinky question. It's not a logical question. But when we surrender the the logic and the intellect and we move it only in the body through using our breath work, our breath will make us feel in a second and we won't have to think about it. So this is uh, this next body of work that we are developing because what we're realizing is it's all about feeling first in order to have behavioral change. So if we want to change behaviors, we don't do it. We don't, we don't, if we want to change our behavior, we don't just change our behavior, right? Because a behavior is a byproduct of what? A belief, a thought, a feeling, an action, and then a result, right? So if we're just trying to manipulate the behaviors, we're never actually going to create sustainable transformation. Mm-hmm. When we get down the layers and we start to really shift our feelings and tap into our emotions and actually understand what we believe, that's where it all starts. And in my, I've been, you know, I've been in personal development since I was like, like I remember listening to Tony Robbins tapes when I was like a child, right? And 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 I've consumed so much content over the years. And what I found to be true, it's transformation is less about consumption and more about integration, more about using our breath to heal our bodies, using our feelings to heal, right? Like that, what I talked about, feel to mm-hmm. heal. That's you know, incredible. like it, it's really about like disintegrating the dependency model, disintegrating this, this model of like I need you to make me feel a certain way, right? I think a lot of people. T- feel like, you know, people have all the answers. Like I've coached thousands of people and I don't have all the answers. Right. And it, and I don't want people depend, to depend mm-hmm. on me to make them feel better. I want to inspire them to make them feel themselves. It's this whole like empowerment movement. Like I'm going to empower you. Like I don't actually believe that's true. Like I really don't believe another human can empower another human. We can inspire people to empower themselves but we can't, mm-hmm. we can't empower a human without creating dependency. Maybe, maybe we can create like false empowerment for a short period of time until that individual goes away, but left to their own devices, what's going to happen, right? So do you believe in inspiring other people to feel better? Because when you are feeling mm-hmm. better, you mm-hmm. are deciding better. Mm-hmm. It's, it's all about really tapping into what feels good to you what makes right 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 yeah i mean i mean even even that is a little bit funny right inspiring people to feel better it's like it's choice on that individual's part if they want to feel better that like i mean i can make them feel better for a short amount of time if i like i don't know tell a joke right (laughs) like or, or or whatever like that that immediately will will make them feel like but like what what we're talking about is like that sustainable 
feeling, right? Mm -hmm. The sustainable feeling of happiness. Like what is that to that particular individual that, that doesn't have anything to do with anything in our external world, right? Mm -hmm. Not another guru or healer or this or that or the other, like those things can help facilitate the process, but really the answers are within, the feeling is within. And I know that's the most cliche thing to say ever, ever, but there's a reason why it's a cliche and that's because it's true, right? Um, I've been studying a lot of Joe Dispenza stuff. I've, uh, we do a book club with our company and the last book that we did was Becoming Supernatural. Coming Supernatural, is that what it's called? Yeah, that's what it's called, yeah. And um, it truly talks about like, how can we have more peacefulness in our internal landscape? Like more, like he basically talked about like, don't open your eyes until you're a hundred percent happy with, with the peace that you feel in your body. And we all have the ability to feel a hundred percent at peace in our systems without adding anything externally, right? Everything in our external world should only add value to what is already whole and already perfect and already peaceful and loving. And if we are, if we are looking in, at our external world to fulfill the sensation or the feeling or the frequency that we're desiring, we're doing it ass backwards. We have to be that first in order to have more of that. If we want more love, we have to be love first. Then we attract more love. If we want abundance, we have to feel abundance first. And sometimes that's the hardest thing, right? For people who are living in scarcity to feel abundant and to feel limitless when, when they look at their bank account and they're like, shit, <laughs> right? But, it, but that's how, that's the, the universe, universal laws. That's how it works. That's how it works. Yeah. So first being what you want. So if you want to feel loved, if you want to feel abundant, if you want to feel healthy, you first get to tap into it to feel it. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we all have the ability to do that through our thoughts, right? Like I can make myself feel right in this moment, full of fear and anxiety and scarcity. I can do that through my thoughts or I can choose to, 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 to feel abundant and to, and to, to make myself feel abundant and increase my frequency through my thoughts. Like I can do both now. It just it comes down to choice. What am I choosing? What am I choosing? What am I choosing? Hmm. That's yeah. incredible. So one last question, Samantha, mm -hmm. because if not, I can be talking with you hours and hours. And, hours. You're so <laughs> and I can talk for hours and hours and hours. So <laughs> let's, let's one more question. Let's do it. <laughs> so what is the one thing in your daily routine that mm. you can't be without no matter what? Oh, my breath. And I, and I, and I say that like loosely, cause obviously if we didn't have breath, we couldn't, we would die, but, but truly using my breath, like intentionally and, 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 and continuously. So, mm -hmm. so you, using breath patterns to regulate my nervous system, to calm my anxiety and to allow myself to be present and to be here. Um, leaning on my breath is my greatest like savior. Mm. Truly, you know? Yeah. Do you have any quick tip for breathing exercise? What helps you that our audience can do right away? Yeah. So the, the simple breath technique that I use to just like really calm me down. I do it for like I'll do it for like even three minutes in the morning is it's only through the mouth. When we use the nose, it creates more constriction. So it's only through the, through the nose, two breaths in through the mouth and one breath out or sorry, it's only through the mouth. Yeah. Sorry. So, and when we do that pattern over and over again for about three minutes, um, it's so useful. If they want an audio on that, I have an audio for that. So just, Samantha Skelly on Instagram and um, just shoot me a DM and I can, I can send you over the recording. Beautiful. Thank you so much for your time and your generosity. So you yeah. already share with the audience, they can find you on Instagram. Is there any other of your favorite places mm. where people can stay connected with you? Honestly, these days I'm pretty much hanging out on Instagram. Yeah. I was on all the things I was on like YouTube and Facebook and I still am. But if you want like an instant response, Hit me up on the IG. I love that. That's that's how I got you. So thank you. Oh, so is that much. how you found me? That's funny. That's <laughs> yeah. crazy that you've been following me for two years. That's insane. I, you know, it's funny because it's over two years now and I did, I remember, I'm not sure if I DM you or if I commented yeah. something, you know, yeah. because I really loved your work. However, back then I didn't have my podcast. I launched my podcast this April, you know, so. Oh. So it's just yeah. like you said, I really love mm. how we open our podcast because you said, I trust that everything is happening for me at the perfect timing. Totally. Totally. It, 
that's something that I remind myself every single yeah. day. And it's incredible because it doesn't happen when we want it. Yeah, it exactly. happens when we need it and when we are ready for it. So exactly. It's ready yeah. now for you. Yeah, girl. Well, I was ready for you too. <laughs> Thank you so much. Is there You're any so last thing or last thought that you would like to share from your heart? Mm. What's really helping me these days is um, space, stillness, and slowness. Hmm. How can we create space? How can we be still? And how can we slow down? Hmm. Especially in this like hyperactive, hyper stimulated, go, go, go world. One of the biggest gifts that we can give our souls is those three things at the same time. That's the best <laughs> gift you could share to end this beautiful mm. interview, Samantha. I mm. love you and your work so much. I really yeah. appreciate you. Thank mm. you so much for showing up for those who just want to be inspired and those who are really in their darkness and you are giving them so much hope and light. So thank you so much. You're so welcome. It's such a privilege being here. Thank you.